The PC-37X gaming headset from Massdrop and Sennheiser brings you into the game with an open back design featuring angled drivers for pinpoint locational accuracy. Be heard clearly through the fold-down noise-canceling mic and enjoy the long-lasting comfort of large plush velvet ear pads. Now available in an all matte black finish so the headset looks as good as it sounds. For more info, click the link in the description and catch the drop before it's gone. Alrighty, my friends, so I recently picked up this dinky little laptop cooler from Opolar. Opolar, I'm probably mispronouncing that, that's okay. Uh, I got this on Amazon, it was an Amazon Prime deal, Woo! when the site was actually working. And so I got it for like 20 bucks, it was down from like 25, 26. And the reason I got it, apart from it just being so dirt cheap, was because it was really highly reviewed. It had like four and a half stars, over 2,000 reviews, so I figured, what the heck? What's the worst that could happen? The worst that could happen is that it sucks, but at the very least we'll get a little video out of it. So uh, I said, well, sure, sure, yeah, you know, why not? Why not? And there's been a lot of news, uh, a lot of news lately about, you know, thermal throttling issues with laptops, <coughs> MacBook. I know it's a software bug, uh, get over it. But still, um, it's a serious issue with a lot of high powered laptops uh, that they'll overheat. They'll overheat and you're not actually getting the most performance out of them as you could be uh, with proper cooling. So we're gonna put this thing to the test. I'm gonna actually be testing it alongside uh, this this MSI GS65 Stealth laptop, which is a pretty heavy hitter in terms of the specifications. It's got a, a Core i7 8750H from Intel, which is a six core eighth gen processor, along with a GTX 1070 Max-Q from Nvidia. So a uh, very, very beastly laptop. It does tend to run warm, but it's not the hottest running laptop I've ever seen. So I think it's a nice sweet spot of a laptop that might not necessarily require the additional cooling, but maybe stands to benefit from, uh, from even more cooling than it already has. We'll see. The cooler, which is powered by USB, mounts to the laptop's exhaust vent and has a built-in fan that essentially sucks out hot air faster than the laptop's fans can blow it out. And this is what lowers the temperatures, in theory. The cooler includes some different size silicone shrouds to make a tight seal around the vented area, with accessories for mounting the cooler more permanently to your laptop if that's your thing. On top of the cooler, there's a power button and a couple more buttons for adjusting the fan's RPM. I just left it at max speed for, for all of today's testing, uh, which definitely made the setup a bit louder than the laptop by itself. Diving right into our tests here, when running the CAN benchmark in GTA 5 at stock frequencies, you can see that when it comes to the CPU package temps, there doesn't really seem to be much of a difference, at least as displayed in hardware monitor. This was kind of disappointing at first, but then I noticed the clock speeds were typically running 100 to 300 megahertz higher when the cooler was installed, which can be significant on a six core CPU in such a CPU driven game. Under the same load, IDA64 indicated the CPU was overheating with or without the cooler, uh, but it was clearly throttling a few percentage points lower with the cooler attached, which likely explains the higher clock speeds. Meanwhile, our GPU seemed indifferent to my Amazon purchase. The GTX 1070 temps maxed out about two thirds of the way through the benchmark with the GPU hitting 75 degrees Celsius without the cooler and 74 degrees C with the cooler. Unfortunately, the one degree difference wasn't enough to push our boost clock up any further, so we ended up plateauing at 1544 megahertz regardless of our cooling configuration. So if the GPU wasn't really responding much to our cooler, did the higher clock speeds of our Hexacore i7 manage to improve gaming performance noticeably? As it turns out, yes. Average frame rates increased by 4%, 1% lows increased by 5.4%, and 0.1% lows increased by 8%. The results you see here were averaged across three runs with the cooler on and three runs with the cooler off. So this is definitely a repeatable behavior that tells us the cooler works. And it's not a game changer in our case by any means, but it's certainly undeniable that this does help performance, even if it's just a little bit. Now, personally, I probably wouldn't drop 20 bucks on a 4% bump in average frame rates, but the story could have been a lot different had we used a hotter running laptop with more serious thermal throttling issues. So it seems this product is most effectively used as a corrective tool for bringing really hot running laptops back down to safer operating temperatures, rather than trying to improve the performance of a normal functioning notebook. So I guess the moral of the story today is, you should be glad if you don't have to buy this product. But that's pretty much all I got for now, guys. Super short and sweet video today. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know what your experience is with these types of coolers. This is the first one of its kind that I've actually personally tried here in the studio. And it's, 
it's it has potential. I think in the right scenario, these can actually be useful. But let me know down below your thoughts. Go ahead and toss a like on the video if you enjoyed it. Also, feel free to get subscribed to the channel for more tech stuff coming at you really soon. You can also follow me on Floatplane if you want to watch my videos a week early without ads for three bucks a month. I'll put a link for that in the video description. Till next time, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Have yourselves a good one, and I'll see y'all in the next video.